Hello and welcome back to another Python tutorial. Um, this time around I wanted to talk about Selenium which is a web browser automation tool and Selenium allows you to write a program which can open up a browser of your choice so something like Chrome or Firefox and then it performs tasks in the browser as a normal human being would. Um, you can do things like click buttons, enter information into forms, search for specific information on the web page, uh, i.e. scrape, and do a ton of other stuff. But before we get started here, I highly recommend you check out the previous video because it provides a good amount of background information on what we're going to do today. Um, and also there was a problem we were running to um, with the way we were doing things in that previous video that is actually going to be solved um, once we do it this way. So I'll annotate that at the in the top right if you want to take a look at that. So to start off, I think we should go over how to install Selenium because this actually gave me a ton of trouble um, when I was first starting out. and um, you can install Selenium itself just by using pip. Um, so you either open up terminal or command prompt depending on which OS you're on. And if you're on um, Python 2, you type in pip. And if you're in Python 3, you type in pip3. And then you just do install Selenium. And that's how you spell it. I already have it, so it'll say requirement already satisfied. But for you, it shouldn't take more than 30 seconds to download and install. <clears throat> but it's not that simple to install Selenium, which is where a lot of my trouble came from. You actually have to also install this Chrome driver if you're planning on using Chrome. And I'm not sure uh, what the requirement is for Firefox, but um, because I've never done it with Firefox, but I know for Chrome, you do need to install this Chrome driver uh, just so that Selenium has kind of a, um, I guess, platform to open up Chrome and perform tasks in Chrome. And I'll put this link in the description. Um, in addition to this, there's the Selenium docs, which go over installation and um, handle some of the specifics. And there's also great uh, kind of um, references here on how to use some of the functions in Selenium and I'll also go ahead and link this uh, main page in the description as well. Um, so now we can actually get uh, started with the code. So to start off I've just imported um, a few things we need. The first one is WebDriver which is what actually allows you to open up a browser and um, I guess just initialize a browser. Um, the second thing I've imported is by, which allows you to search for things using specific parameters. So um, for example here, I've done by xpath, and um, that's basically what this library allows you to do. I'm all, I've also imported webdriver wait, and what webdriver wait does is it allows you to kind of wait for a page to load, um, and that's in this line here. I've also imported expected conditions, which allow you to specify what you're looking for on a specific web page in order to kind of say that that web page has loaded. And finally, I've imported timeout exception. You don't really need this, but uh, since I'm handling a timeout exception here, I needed to import this. Um, if you want to just uh, get thrown the default exception, you don't need to import this. Um, so the first two lines here um, aren't necessary in this specific project, but I decided to include them just as an example um, for you know if you have a project that you do need to do this. And basically what these two lines do is that when you're opening up Chrome using Selenium, it adds the incognito function um, of Chrome in. So when, once you open up a new browser, it'll actually be incognito. Um, and to do that, you just do option equals webdriver dot Chrome options, and then you add the argument incognito. This is just the syntax to do it. If you wanna add different options to Chrome, or um, you can even go as far as downloading, downloading an extension to Chrome, so something like Adblock or um, some other extension that you need for your project, and you can actually specify the uh, file path to that ex extension and load Chrome up with the extension installed uh, using Selenium. And there's plenty of uh, resources on Google. Just a quick Google search will show you how to do that. Um, so this is where the code actually starts. This is where we actually open up a Chrome browser. Um, and to do that, uh, you just do webdriver.chrome. And then you actually have to specify where that Chrome driver is that you downloaded. So when you're on this page and you're downloading Chrome driver, make sure you kind of make a mental note of where that's being downloaded to so that you can specify the file path when you're actually trying to open up Chrome. So you just say executable path and then um, my specific Chrome driver is in this directory. And then you can also do Chrome options equals option, which is what this is. And we just added the incognito. So this will just open up Chrome um, and add the incognito option. So this line right here just uh, goes to a specific page. So we said browser.get and then we specified this uh, Yahoo Finance page for Facebook, um, which if you watch the previous video, you'll be acquainted with. 
And then uh, here we've waited, we're going to wait ten, up to 10 seconds for the page to load. We're not uh, necessarily going to wait the full 10 seconds, but that's just going to be the maximum amount of time that we wait before we throw this timeout exception and say that we timed out waiting for the page to load. So this is the syntax I've chosen to do this. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do it in this format, but I think this is the cleanest way of doing it. And I've just said timeout equals 10 seconds, so that's the maximum amount of time I'm willing to wait for a page to load. You can tweak this to your own um, preferences. And then I've said uh, graph, actually we don't even need that. I've said web driver wait, um, and then I've passed in the browser, so the Chrome that we're using, and also the timeout, which is the maximum amount of time you wanna wait. And I've said until, uh, the expected condition is that there's a visibility of the element, and then this is the element that we're waiting to become visible. And basically what this element is, is, um, is actually this EP, this earnings thing right here. Sorry, I gotta get rid of this ad. Is this earnings thing right here? Because I noticed that when I was loading the page, um, this kind of earnings link uh, was one of the last things to load. So I kind of went ahead and assumed that if this earnings uh, link was loaded, then the entire page would be relatively fully loaded. Um, and it's not the most, I guess, professional way of doing it, but um, it works for our purposes here. So I've just said by XPath, and if you're not familiar with XPath, again, um, a quick Google search can show you the syntax, but basically when you're using XPath, you just do forward slash, forward slash, and then you specify the type of tag that you're waiting, or that you're trying to find or wait for, and then I've said, so if we go back to this earnings, you'll see that um, it's actually in this, a in this A tag right here, and it has this really long class right here. So I've said that the element that we're waiting for is an A tag, and the class, so the class is equal to this long thing right here, which is the exact same thing as this. And then if that doesn't load within the 10 seconds, uh, we get the timeout exception and this just goes ahead and prints timed out waiting for page to load and it quits the browser. <clears throat> so now um, the fun stuff, here we're actually getting all of the titles for the financial value. And by titles, I mean just like this previous close, open, bid, ask, all the way through to one year target estimate. Um, and to do that, I've just said titles element. So basically what, what I mean by titles element is that we're not just getting the pure titles, we're getting kind of a selenium object or a selenium element of those titles. And so if you go through and just try and print titles in titles element, it won't actually print the titles themselves. It'll give you like these selenium weird objects that um, don't really mean anything. Um, and I'll show you how to access the actual titles themselves in the next line. But for now, let's just go through getting the selenium objects. So to do that, I've just said browser dot find elements by XPath, and there's actually a very subtle difference in doing find element and find elements. Um, if you're trying to get just one element, you can do find element, and that'll actually return the element itself. But in this case, since there's more than one title, we need to use find elements, and um, that that like I said, returns the array of Selenium objects and not the actual elements themselves. Um, so find elements by XPath, and then I've just said that the elements we're looking for, um, I'll just show you guys one of this for reference. So you can see here that it's a TD tag, and it has this class, and I've just set, uh, specified that here. I've said it's a TD tag, and the class is equal to C black, and that's what this is here. And they're all like this, so I'll show you the next one just to um, prove to you that. So you can see this one is also like that. So this uh, just puts all of the, the kind of selenium objects into an array. And then here, I've just used list comprehension to actually get the, the titles themselves. So not the Selenium objects anymore, but the actual titles. Um, and if you're not familiar with list comprehension, I've gone ahead and written this out as a normal for loop. So you can just reference that. I um, mean, you know, pause the video, take a look if you're not familiar with this. But basically what this says is it says for X in titles element. So uh, X is kind of representing one of the Selenium objects in that array. We've said get X.text. And when you do x.text, it actually goes ahead and gets the specific element or the, the text of that Selenium object itself, um, rather than giving you kind of this mumbo jumbo that you don't know what it means. Um, so we've stored all of those titles in this array called, called titles. And, and then just for reference, um, I've, I've gone ahead and printed it here. So next, we're actually going to get the financial values themselves. And those are just this 119.87 all the way down to 155.56. And to do that, it's a very similar process. Um, I've just done, again, find elements by XPath, and, uh, and this time the class is a little bit different, so I'll show you this first one. The class for this one is TA and FWB, and again, it's a TD tag, so I've just gone ahead and specified that here, TD, and the class is TA and FWB. And then the exact same thing as what we did here, 
I've done here, just getting x.text for x in values elements. And then I've printed those as well for reference. And now finally, this is a question I got a ton um, when I posted the previous video, which was how can you pair these two things together? So how can you pair a title and a value together? And to do that, we can actually use this really handy function called the zip function. And basically what zip does is you pass in one array and then you pass in another array or anything that's iterable. And it takes the first element from both of those and matches them together into a tuple. And then it takes the second element from both of those and it matches those together in a tuple. And it does that all the way down the line of both of those iterables. And then it returns an array of tuples. Um, so each of the tuples that it made. So what I've done here is I've just said for each tuple. So for, for like the pair of title and value in this zip, um, in, the, in what zip returns, we're going to print the title and then we're going to print this colon and then print the value. So I'll go ahead and run this and stop talking so you can finally see what this actually looks like. So once we click run, it will actually open up a Chrome browser here and it's incognito as well. Um, and you won't see anything happen here, but you can see the output of what we're doing here. So there's the titles and here's the values. And then here they are printed together. So I've, like I said here, it's just printing the title plus a colon. So title colon, and that's printing the value. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try and uh, respond as quickly as possible. And um, if you want to see more Python tutorials, which I will most likely be putting out in the next few days, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.